Hey everybody, welcome to Kitchen Counter Abstract. I'm Blake and today I am showing you how and why I paint in books. So painting in books is great because uh, it's a very inexpensive material and almost it's almost like an inconsequential substrate. You do not have to worry about wasting a really fancy expensive paper. You can just lay your materials down I hear from a lot of artists that putting down those first marks are intimidating. They're the hardest part of starting a painting. I don't have to put down those first marks on a virginal white piece of paper. That work is already done for me. If you have one of those little lending libraries, you know, those little boxes on a post that people build and put in front of their house and you can leave a book, take a book, take a peek in there. You can often find something like that. Or if you don't have one of those, Goodwill or secondhand bookstores are a great option. I took a little field trip this weekend and I picked up a few things that I'm going to be painting in. I really like this section in this store because these are the old books and the kind of paper they printed on back then was a little different, a little thicker, and um, I like to paint on that kind of paper. So I'm just gonna see if they have anything. So the paper is a little bit more like newsprint. And I like that because it really sucks up the paint in a really nice way. This one has a lot of pages, maybe too many pages. Um, Although it's got this really nice empty cover that I can paint on and design however I want. This one is adorable. Look at that old cover. It's really cute. This is kind of a nice format too. And look at this cute tiny one. I love this one. I might get this one. I'll be back to get this. Great. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. In this math book, uh, I liked some of the diagrams in there. I thought they were kind of interesting. The pages of this book are really thin and um, they tend to rip easily. I don't recommend this thin of a paper, but uh, you know, as you lay down the paint, the paper does become a little bit thicker. This book I found at a secondhand bookstore. It's a book of poetry and in the back I write a thank you to the author of it. So the art in these books that I create is not meant to be in a gallery or really even to show anybody else. They're just for me. These are for my eyes only. I could show them to friends, but they'd probably be bored silly. I'm going to have a paint session in these two guys and I will rotate as I, as you probably notice, I like to do. By the time that I get to one of the pieces that is drying, I can see it with fresh eyes and a fresh perspective. And I also really like for my paintings to dry because the wet on wet is a thing. And sometimes I use wet on wet. It's just, it can tend to get muddy if you don't let your layers dry. That's also why you'll often see me using the Degas fixative because I don't like necessarily my chalks to bleed or run or some of those water soluble materials that can get very muddy and ugly looking. Um, so I like to retain those crisp layers. This is the book I got from a little, the Little Lending Library. It's a mathematics textbook and the pages are quite thin on this and that's okay because when you apply the acrylic paint, it makes the pages a little thicker, but you have to be careful because they could rip. I decorated the cover just very roughly with the date. I am getting started with some artwork here. It's my cat. I'm working with this white gel pen. I wanted to see what that looks like on sort of a dark background. Playing with some gouache. Here you can see mentally I was preparing for Mexico. Look how pretty that is. That way that that, that watercolor bleeds in there. It's really nice. I love this page because it looks like a little kid did it. And that means there's just a lot of looseness and freedom. So obviously these are not 
pieces of art that I would even frame or, I mean, they would probably look great in a frame if you just did a nice mat around them. But these are just for myself and I really want to encourage you to also have a book like this and keep just for yourself because it really takes the pressure off and allows you to just play and learn the materials, figure out composition and things you wouldn't normally do if you were under the pressure of trying to make a, a good masterpiece. This blue is definitely from this crank, I can tell. And I really like this cobalt blue color bought at a secondhand bookstore. And it is an old poetry book. I decorated the cover. I used some gouache on the back. Um, I was just playing with these gouache colors because I just got them. But you have to be careful. You have to fix this gouache because if you don't, any water that gets on them, uh, it will activate it and it makes a huge mess. You can tell these colors. I was getting ready for Mexico. Here at the airport, I was drawing some people very quickly. I was trying to draw people and do it in a way so they didn't know I was drawing them. Here I was playing with gouache. You'll notice it's a very matte texture and it soaks in a little bit like watercolor, which is really beautiful. Uh, I did it my friend Barry in 30 seconds. Here's some more gouache and I was in Mexico at this point. I love this. It feels almost like um, some prop in a Wes Anderson film. <laughs> I love this one too because it definitely feels like I, I was drawing a sketch and then my kid or something came in and started doodling on it. Little things in here. I don't know how that happened, but I love that right there. Like that could be a painting in and of itself. Here, my girlfriends are sitting around the pool chatting. So really quick, I do these super quick with a pen. I like the colors in this one. I call this one Nightmare Candy. <laughs> this black is super shiny and that's kind of the way I've started, started to move into uh, gouache and the vinyl paints because the carbon black, a lot of times the carbon black acrylic gets get very shiny. Here's a poem called Honey Witch. I just like the name of that. It was so interesting. Obviously this page came out, um, but this painting, this painting reminded me of Pendleton. Here I'm utilizing some collage. These are blueberries and I love to utilize text. Maybe it's the graphic designer in me. And this is the last page. I took this crank marker and I think a charcoal pencil and I worked really just, this was right for before breakfast and I was kind of late to a meeting and I just, I came back and I was like, I was glad that I did not work on it anymore. I mean, a lot of it has to do with this aged paper in the back, but that's it. I um, wrote a little thank you to the author, Aileen Kilmer, and I said, oh, and yay comes the end of this poetry book, the first in which I do abstract art. And I hope it was written by a female poet and poetess, and I hopefully did no disrespect on the painting.